We start with breaking news. Germany has ordered a district of almost 400,000 people back into lockdown amid a widening coronavirus outbreak. This after Germany's top health experts warned that the new cluster of cases had the potential to spread quickly. Word of the new restrictions came from Armin Laschet, premier of the country's most populous state, North Rhine-Westphalia. The new outbreak is centered on a massive meat processing plant, Tönnies, near the city of Gütersloh. More than 1,500 workers there have tested positive for coronavirus. Laschet says police deployments will be used to ensure the home quarantines of thousands of Tönnies employees with force if necessary. In the district of Gütersloh, we're now dealing with the biggest individual infection outbreak in North Rhine-Westphalia and in Germany. The specific situation with the geographical spread of locations and also the international nature of the Tunyu's workforce mean that this outbreak is a potentially enormous pandemic risk. The mechanism agreed between the federal and local governments does not require widespread measures in the case of clearly localised infections. However, we will now, for the first time in Germany, return a whole region to the lockdown measures that were in place a few weeks ago. Well, let's bring in our correspondent, uh, Nina Hase, who's uh, followed that story. Nina, uh, what exactly does that now mean for the people in that region? The regional authorities in North Rhine-Westphalia did hesitate for a while because it is, of course, a big step to place an entire district under lockdown again. So at first, what they did was uh, to c close the plant where that outbreak happened last week. Then they closed schools and kindergartens also last week. But now Amin Laschet, who we just saw, said that it was vital to place the entire district of Gütersloh under uh, lockdown. And that means that some 360,000 people are affected. That lockdown will be in place at least until next week when they hope to have more information about um, how the virus has spread exactly. It means that people can no longer go to pubs or cinemas, museums, everything that was reopened is now being closed again. They can't exercise indoors and the workers who've been placed under quarantine, they will be supplied with essential goods by authorities. Well, uh, I mean, Laschet, the state premier, used some quite robust language there. Uh, how will the regional government there enforce these measures? We're talking about some 7,000 workers uh, from that Tönnies meat processing plant and their families who have been placed under quarantine. And I mean, Laschet, you said it. Uh, he said uh, he's going to deploy the police to make sure that the quarantine measures are adhered to, that people do stay indoors and uh, that the police can use force to um, actually impose those measures if necessary, because, of course, they need to carry out tests and some of the population there has not been so willing to be tested for the virus. Well, the new lockdown comes after more than 1,500 workers at a slaughterhouse near Gütersloh tested positive for COVID-19. Let's uh, have a brief look at how this whole story has developed. Police, medics and even the fire department have descended on the town of Reda Wiedenbrück to help stem a wave of coronavirus infections. Over 1,500 employees from the Tönnies meatpacking plant have tested positive for COVID-19, many of them foreign workers from Eastern Europe who live and work in dire conditions. Local activist Inge Burtschneider has been protesting the situation for years. She takes us to a building where 13 Romanian factory employees lived until recently. It's only 10 days, 14 days at most, since they left this place. Inside, a pungent smell greets us. Mold covers the walls. Many of the Eastern European meat workers live in such dismal conditions. Most locals were aware of the situation, but said nothing. Inge Burtschneider was different, even organizing protests. We demonstrated in front of this house in December 2018. This house is notorious. Andre, not his real name, worked at the Tunney's plant for two years for a subcontractor. 
The worst thing about it was the working hours. We began at one in the afternoon and finished at one in the morning. Overtime work was not paid. Andre has since quit. After the coronavirus outbreak at the Tunis plant, authorities fear the virus will spread to the rest of the city's population and maybe even beyond. I'm worried and it feels like we're losing control of the situation. We don't know what is going to happen next. It's frightening how the coronavirus has swept into our area. We're afraid they'll close everything down here. It's unbelievable, frightening, scary. The Tunis meatpacking plant has already shut down. The pandemic has exposed problems that Inge Bulschneider has been trying to draw attention to for years. But only now are authorities paying serious attention to the meat workers' plight. Nina, that's a local situation there. But if we look at the bigger picture uh, uh, in terms of the whole of Germany, what do people need to prepare for? Is this the beginning of a second wave already? Gütersloh is um, located in Germany's most populous state, North Rhine-Westphalia. Some 17 million people live there. Of course, there's a lot of commuting between cities and the authorities simply can't be sure that the virus hasn't spread and that the lockdown will be enough to make sure that uh, the local outbreak really does stay only that, a local outbreak. Um, and the president of the leading public health agency, the Robert Koch Institute, Mr. Wieler, said this morning that there is a risk of a second wave here in Germany, that he is optimistic that it can be prevented, provided that people do still adhere to all the necessary measures, like keeping their distance and uh, adhering to hygiene, etc. But of course, that will be the big challenge for the coming months for the authorities to make sure that people adhere to those rules while the numbers are still low, to still maintain that sense of urgency that the virus is still here. Nina Hasov, thank you. And here are some other developments in the global pandemic. The World Health Organization says the number of global coronavirus infections has now topped 9 million. North and South America account for more than half of the new cases. India's hospital system has started to buckle under the weight of new COVID-19 cases. The country reports more infections per day than any country besides the United States and Brazil. Spanish authorities have reimposed lockdown measures in some northeastern cities after new clusters of infections emerged. This within days of Spain lifting a nationwide state of emergency. And for the first time in 75 years, world leaders will not be coming to New York for the annual United Nations General Assembly. The September meeting will instead be conducted virtually with mostly pre-recorded speeches.